Chat. Check one two, check one two, check one two, check one two. Symbolic symbolics.
two, three. Talking, talking, talking. Yes, I'm talking. You can.
play. Should be easy, right? Push play. There we go. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at uh, Airy Booth. I'm Brian Gaffney with Ron Martin. We're with the Unity Professional Artistry Group. And we're gonna to talk to you today about our professional artistry tools used for virtual production. But like any game engine, we have our roots in the game marketplace. So our founders actually were creating games and in the process created the game engine. And that platform, uh, the Unity Engine, Unity Pro, runs across every platform from your mobile devices to your interactive platforms to your favorite game consoles to your favorite laptops and PCs and workstations. And really what we do with this tool is we empower storytellers to create their vision and do that in the form of an interactive experience with games. And I haven't met a game maker that isn't really a wannabe filmmaker, right? They're all storytellers and they're using these tools in this real-time vision to create an experience that they can reiterate and change and add interactivity to, at the same time, expand upon the story that they're trying to tell. And with that, we provide a tool set and I think an effective range of tools that allow people to really enhance that experience and create images that are just photo real. And with that, we're gonna talk about our latest project, Enemies. So it's great we have this music company. We turn the music down on the uh, on the video here, but what you're seeing on the wall here today is Enemies, and Enemies is an expansion of a world that we started to create. Uh, this was all done over the last couple of years. Two and a half years ago, we did a demo of something called The Heretic. Did anyone see The Heretic by any chance? A couple of you, okay, great. It is a, uh, it was our second attempt at recreating a believable human. So what you see here is, uh, running on what they call LTS 2022. It is the latest version of Unity out of the box. No custom programming, no custom code. Utilizing DCC tools like Maya, Houdini, and bringing those, that content into the game engine, we're capable of creating hyper-realistic uh, content. What you're seeing here is all computer generated, running, it runs at real time on a TI-3080, on a pretty beefy PC, but it does render in real time. Now, what does that mean? That means that every element that you're seeing here, from the light shafts, from the color blooms, from the chromatic aberration, and also uh, the lens flares are all generated, simulated in real time. So when this is playing, every single frame is being rendered and it's playing out at uh, 30 frames a second. Utilizing the technology, some of the, the companies that Unity has acquired over the last uh, couple of years, we've created something called the Professional Artistry Tools Division. In Pro Arts is a company called Ziva Dynamics. Ziva Dynamics is a, a fascinating piece of software. Uh, which allows us to do the physical musculature and underlying technology and simulation of creatures and people. Oh, we lost our video on the wall over there. Oh, here it is, coming back. So what you're seeing here is something from Ziva Dynamics. Maybe you're not seeing it there, but you could maybe see it here. <laughs> it's a little crunchy. I'm sorry about that. So, Ziva allows us to create high fidelity photorealistic humans and creatures. Here you see this lion which was created in Maya. The muscles and the rigging were done in Maya, but Ziva allows us to use uh, the art of machine learning, if you will, to be able to comp compute the muscles underneath the creature's skin. Now, those muscles are dynamically rigged into the skeletal system of the character. That ability to layer up the muscles, to be able to create the fatty tissue that's underneath, to be able to stretch skin over top of the, the muscles and the fat, to be able to allow jiggle on the flesh. All of these things have been created utilizing Ziva Dynamics. What we see here is a Ziva Showreel, 
and some of the different use cases by our clients are shown here. When, when you see the breakdown of these VFX shots, it focuses specifically on how Ziva was used in creating that dynamic flexation. So everything from the muscle insertion points to the flexors, the scale of the muscles gets trained by the ML to be able to be recreatable, to make these characters actual puppets. Now those digital puppets are quite sophisticated and in order to be able to do it effectively, uh, you know, it does take both artistry and some time. But the results give you a repeatable characterization, something that you can use in every scene. So it's not as if you're making this for one shot. You're repeating and being able to use the system to support that character throughout the different aspects of your film. You can see that believability in that muscle system. Uh, and interestingly enough, Ziva Dynamics was a, a, a research that started in Weta, Digi Weta Digital. Weta is the New Zealand technology company, which Unity recently acquired. And it allows uh, us to expand and break into the, the feature film market with a company that has a proven track record and created a pipeline of tools which support their great animation, great uh, visual effects. We'll talk about that a little later. And again, if you take a look at these shots, this actually what we're seeing here is student work. Okay, when you have a tool that democratizes such a high level of artistry, and we can use these tools to help students get jobs into the business, we see that, that flexibility and that accessibility is what Unity is all about in the democratization of these tools. In addition to character creation and human creation, all these characters walk around in an environment that we know and exist in, which is the outside world. So creating environments like trees, foliage, landscape is very critical to a virtual set design. If you've seen anything from Star Wars and the Mandalorian and uh, virtual production of outside environments, most of that is created in Speed Tree. This tool is a procedural modeling tool where you can actually start with a library of trees, uh, tree, tree genus, tree type of uh, tree type can be selected, and then from there, very easy to animate on top of that. Um, you have Magnus to raise the tree up and lower the tree down. You have the ability to select on any portion of the tree from the limb, the trunk to the branches, and then from there, the tools expose themselves to allow you to animate those and create the environment that you're longing for. So. With there, we have the ability to change both season, uh, time of day, the lighting, the way the material would act, and then it has its own uh, material generation tool built inside of it, so you can take images, capture them, bring them in, and create very photorealistic uh, materials on these trees. And then, as you say, move the light around, change the lighting. It works with all the popular DCC tools in the market as well. And here we're looking at their showreel. And again, you've probably seen some of these shots and opening scenes from Marvel movies. This is the opening shot here from Star Wars. And in this, that whole environment sequence uh, created with inside of Speedtree. So we have Speedtree for television and Speedtree cinema. And then these tools, as I say, work on top of your DCC tools to allow you to provide the full experience of animation and uh, bring the trees to life, if you would, with that wind and the sort of movement to actually add life to it. Going through these scenes here, you can see you know, the beautiful fidelity, the visual quality that you can get. And that's what really brings together the virtual set and environment. When you have that experience that in the background feels real, um, even though it might be fantastical, uh, is really what brings it together. And these scenes, along with Ziva, along with some of the other tools we'll show you with Art Engine, are the building blocks to creating that believable visual effect, that believable virtual set background. So a couple more uh, shots here. You can see um, there's a lot of action going in here, but it's really the landscaping and the environment that these characters are moving around in that really adds to the visibility. Your eyes are drawn in by the character, but yet if that dinosaur was walking and he didn't have that background around him, it wouldn't feel as real. Just a gorgeous reel of shots, and Speedtree is uh, 
excellent product. Again, procedural modeling tool has its own engine. It's agnostic, works with both Unreal and Unity and Academy Award winning as well. Another tool we have in our tool chest here for our Pro Arts tool is a product we have in support of virtual reality is Art Engine. So Art Engine is an AI assisted tool that is different than the procedural modeling process we were just talking about with, with Speedtree. With this tool, you can start with a process of photogrammetry or photometry, or with single photos, be able to bring those directly into Art Engine and then seamlessly tile those at world scale and be able to push those directly into your game engine. It works natively with Unity. We have a direct link to quickly reiterate single photos that you can then apply and put onto a material, uh, excuse me, onto a primitive model and push into your game engine. It's also agnostic and works with any game engine out there as a material authoring tool. What's really unique about it is the AI assisted artistry. So the process of taking these materials in, starting from scratch, painting them up in all the maps that you need to create a proper material like your height map and your normal map and your albedo, all that when you're doing a procedural process, every time you make a change, you have to make a change across all those maps. With Art Engine, it works through AI assisted artistry. Anytime you make it a change, it'll manipulate all the maps simultaneously. So creating a virtual set like this from single photos is really easy and effective to do. We have powerful toads like mutation where I can take an image and mutate it in endless variants. So now as I'm trying to create an environment, I have a single photo. I don't want it to look like a single photo uh, plastered all over these walls. Now I can mutate them and create that organic look, that organic feel that really is what, again, sells the gag. So you can see a before and a after of those images. It was the same image, just mutated. And then bringing these into the game engine, adding that height and depth map information uh, is really where Art Engine shines. So Artematics is a company we acquired just a couple of years ago. And with Art Engine and Unity and our additional Pro Art tools is really an effective, powerful tool. So here we're showing a couple of scenes that we created for GDC, but also um, are used on virtual sets. We have this set up in Erie uh, and Burbank. These are models that were actually sculpted in ZBrush, uh, fairly high poly, but you could bring those directly into Art Engine. It has a baker that'll actually bake out a normal map and a height map. And then from there, we have a mesh tool that'll decimate down those high poly models into lower poly so you can then texture them. Here's a scene that was created, just the framework in Blender, but then the artwork itself was all single photos brought in created in Art Engine and then put onto the walls. The vines and the leaves, the leaves are actually captured using a technique called chrome ball, which is a, a process where I could take those leaves, put them on a little surface, put the chrome ball, take around eight to 16 photos, and the light fields get recorrected and uh, combined in Unity. And then we went into Speedtree to add those vines and that definition. And this is all the process of that virtual production toolkit. So you know, virtual production is the buzzword of NAV 2022. Uh, we had a panel a little earlier where we were talking about asset creation, about being able to give tools to the creators. What you'll see in some of these shots from some of the productions we've worked on in the past is a quite a strong legacy of working in virtual production. The specific use case that we're seeing here is John Bruno being able to manipulate a virtual camera where there wasn't never a camera before. So from an from essentially a mobile device, an iPad, the cinematographers could plot out the different shots that were going to be used in the film. We basically prototyped the whole film with five mocap actors on a mocap stage. All those five actors played 45 different roles. So the, the ability there to work, to shoot, to capture everything inside of a six week shoot and then prototype the whole film with the DP using a virtual production set, you can see they get a responsive feeling. The ability for someone to interact with a handheld camera in a virtual environment is a very important part to have that hand of the cinematographer on every shot. One of the things you'll see in these different uh, behind the scenes footage is, the, is this acting of the different uh, dramatic incidents in the film. 
So having the physical space to be able to recreate these shots gave us this opportunity to really make sure that the story worked before going to principal photography. It's a very effects heavy show with all of the effects and the, the moments in the movie happening at sea. So being able to put them together, being able to do it efficiently, being able to compare the old way of doing something and the new way is much better. I'm sorry, I was stepping away from the microphone. All right. So when we look at these shots, we, we see the visual effects. Now this was all pre-visualization. What you're seeing here is good enough for the creative directors, the cinematographers, the CG supervisors to make sure they're spending the money where they need to, putting the effort on the production where the money counts. So these are, you know, this is actually a shot using uh, the Microsoft HoloLens, giving Tom Hanks the ability to don a, an XR viewer to be able to feel like he's in the set. And while he's walking around, you can see the set actually tracking his head. So before he gets on set, he can go through all the different actions. What was integral to this authenticity of this film was that he appeared to be the captain of this ship. So the specialists and the Navy supervisors that we brought into the film could actually teach him and he could work and pre-visualize all of his actions before the physical set was actually built. Here you see, that was John Bruno at the end of a day, actually sitting in a chair, virtually uh, shooting some of the sets. Another show that we worked on with Rise FX over in Berlin is called Stowaway. Joe Penna had just come off of a, a single person film, uh, his first full length feature for the cinema called Arctic. So Joe wanted to use virtual production because he felt that he could get the handheld feel of the shots for all of the space sequences. Over 15 minutes of virtual production was created over two weeks while visiting Germany. And as you can see, we don't have an LED volume. We don't have a mocap studio. We're actually using a handheld mobile device running Unity on a controller with two Sony or Xbox, uh, Xbox One controllers. So we're using the joysticks as we would using the wheels and this allowed us a lot of mobility and uh, really give the, character, the camera a character in the shoot. I know it's a little dark here, but in this insets, we see the final, this is actually one of the previous shots. So the shots match shot for shot. That sensibility, that camera, that personality allows the software to pass the, the director's intent all the way along the pipeline into post effects. What you're seeing here is a, a, a reel for Weta. I'm gonna throw it over to Brian. Yeah, so at the end of last year, Unity came together with Weta FX, Weta Digital, excuse me. We acquired their engineering team and their tool set, and we plan to work in support of their biggest customer, now our biggest customer, Weta FX. And with that, we have the great luxury of working with leading designers and leading tools creators that have been using these tools in purpose-built shots for many years. And now we're gonna get to learn directly side by side with them of how we can actually take these tools and democratize these tools to bring them into the community. So we currently plan to work uh, with Weta right now in support of their pipeline with their existing visual effects uh, customers out there that are working on shows together. Uh, as I mentioned, we both have a big customer, Weta FX, who plans to continue to use their existing pipelines and tools. So we're gonna be supporting them as well as democratizing the tools long-term to bring to the broader community. We're very excited about this relationship because it's not just an acquisition, it's, a, it's an in-depth partnership. And already Joe Marks and the engineering team have been meeting with our teams. We're having weekly meetings about how our pro arts group can learn from Weta and also what Weta can start to do with some of our own pro art tools, especially in the area of real-time visualization. So we're extremely excited about how we can build upon their legacy, build upon what they've done, bring these two to the wider masses, not just for cinema filmmaking, but also for broadcast television, for 
broadcast live events, uh, it's the combination of these that really is what nails virtual production, what nails that pro art side of things is that experience, that knowledge base, and then touch point on those tools. So we're very excited about that. We're really happy to be here today. Um, Airy Solutions has been a great partner with us. Uh, they have their facilities in Burbank and London, and we've been setting up with them and testing these tools out, not just for real-time playback and a game engine, but the integration of all these trigger points from the open sound control to drive DMX lighting rigs to integrate the augmented reality experience along with the virtual experience. Um, just this last week up in Vancouver, uh, we supported the TED Talk, which was a virtual production uh, approach that had no LED walls. It was multiple cameras into a game engine, back out through projection, projection which then formed the backdrop, and with that, the augmented experience. Thank you for raising the mic, Brian. So. <laughs> I'm sure you all heard me up close here, but to reiterate that, we're a, a multi-purpose tool set now, a platform, if you would, that we're building a series of professional artistry tools around to create the complete environmental ecosystem for content creation. Do you have anything to add to that? Just that some of our partners are here today, uh, working with Ari, Moses, ICVR, uh, we've been We've been growing this family of clients, of technologies, being able to realize that there are true strengths that reside inside of you know, people's workflows, inside of the technologies that have been used over the past couple of decades. Our goal is to complement those technologies in a way that we can continue to develop and build these relationships so that we can have enough people working with us to actually vi and viably impact the virtual production process. Exactly, we're, we're a, a game engine born out of a game company. And from that, we've built an extensive platform that people can plug into. So besides the LED back wall and the motion camera tracking, the production side leading up to that with the VCAM, facial capture rigs, dealing with motion capture in addition to camera capture, so uh, camera tracking. So we have um, tie-in with Xsense and Vicon and all the other um, motion capture tools that add to the performance that might be replaced by that Ziva character. So it's the combined capability of bringing everything into the game engine, playing out of the game engine, having the creative tools that tie into the existing DCC marketplace of content creators. So things aren't gonna change overnight. They're always an evolution of it, but the real-time game engine platform, being able to output your content on multiple devices from a mobile phone to a, you know, a, an MSG sphere, right? You know, we have this such wide range of display technologies today and LED walls sort of replacing a, a flat cinema screen is not too exciting, but when we start to look at where LED walls can be integrated into practical sets, into architecture, into that next experience of live capture and projection is really where the storytelling process is going. And this is really what we're trying to empower with Unity. With that, we're down to about two and a half minutes. I wanted to see if there was any questions in the audience that we could defer back to. Um, if not, Ron and myself will be up here to answer additional questions. You can always go to unity.com to learn more. Um, earlier in our last session, we talked about education. I'd also say that education, access, and literacy are really something we're also trying to drive. It's not just about showing pretty pictures, but teaching people how to use these tools and how to use them in unique ways. Um, I think that's a, a great feature point of Unity as well. We're really open to exchanging our knowledge base and getting the information out there. So we have our Unity blog and we also have our website, but we have a lot of other partners that we're working with to share this information. Yeah, one, one of the key sites on all the Unity websites is called, it's learn.unity.com. The learning process, you know, the, we see the, these very complex uh, outcomes. In virtual production, working in front of the uh, in in front of the content creation is a really important aspect. 
we have a massive library of assets which exist online and the Unity Asset Store is an amazing place to find work that uh, you can afford uh, very easily and by b building your assets they might not be your final assets but they'll be assets that you can use as proxies while you prototype and visualize your shoot and great point uh, to sort of transition a product like art engine which is AI assisted is empowered by machine learning and to build up that machine learning knowledge base. We've been going around and scanning the world for the last couple of years. We've uh, created an extensive library of high quality, high fidelity AK PBR materials. We plan to combine that with uh, the library from Speedtree and the library from Ziva, and eventually the, the Weta assets once decimated down but still represent Mordor and all these great worlds combined together it can provide us a library for world building that extends beyond broadcast and, and visual effects but into digital twin and into the rest of the future of creating replicas of our environment. So thank you, everyone. We're down to the last 30 seconds down the countdown. Here comes Cassidy. We have time okay, for Okay, we do have time for questions. Anyone have any questions? There we go, front row. Uh, thank you very much for your very good knowledge. Uh, is this your website uh, learning? Uh, is, it's uh, only online or it's on a film school? So it's an interesting uh, point. Anyone can si anybody can log in, get a Unity ID, and can take any of the classes there. There are guided lessons, so they are one to few. There are pre-recorded lessons, or there are lessons where you can uh, teach yourself at your own pace. So each of those three different models provide something that suits for everyone. If you want to take these. Uh, teachings and create your own lesson plan and your own curriculum, you can. In the, few, in the near future, we're going to be creating curriculum for, verse, for specific use cases, uh, focusing more on virtual production. And uh, if we use any uh, proto, any kind of uh, graphics or anything, if there is any license or anything, that's the, if I could purchase, that's the, I have a completely right to make my own feature length movie. There are assets that if you buy them from the asset store, there are an enterprise licensing and you buy the license to use that for your production. That goes for game assets as well. So you can use that to create Thank a game. you, thank you. One of the things we've seen is uh, an amazing ability for young independent content creators to put their assets onto the asset store and dependent on the realism or the novelty of that asset, there's some pretty decent use cases out there which can make a secondary or primary income for young artists or professionals at that matter too. Education is a big part and we also work closely with our customers through um, direct engineering access as well. A lot of times companies will develop a game or a project and they're like, they need optimization. So they'll actually hire a Unity person to join their team. We also have an Accelerate Solutions group, which is a, a Ron's you know, past a team where they actually go and work on shows and they work for our customers and we help them get across the finish line. So we start with a free education with our Learn platform all the way up to our Solutions team, which can help solve your problems. So I'm gonna introduce Louise Skelly now to answer that question. So sorry, just to finish answering your question. I don't know if he's listening now. <laughs> I think he's on his phone. <laughs> Sorry, I just, wanted, I just wanted to clarify. If you do the learn and you create something, you own it entirely. It's just it just if you use the asset store. It was just you're asking for yourself. If you create something, it's fully yours. We don't own any IP just because you use the Unity engine. Right, we're yeah. not gonna come back and charge royalties or anything. Well, thank you very much. If you have an great. opportunity, thank you. go to unity.com, download the software. It's free to use, free to learn. And then once you hit a certain uh, limit, you know, once you start using the tool for production, then it's got a, a maintenance and a license there for you to uh, own a, a license of Unity. So thank you.